It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any. Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a teaching tutorial Thursday with Professor Greg Cosell from NFL Films University in the house. We are presented, of course, by DraftKings. Whether it's DraftKings Sportsbook to place your bets or DraftKings for DFS, those are our dudes. You are all our dudes and dudettes. Cannot wait to announce three more winners tomorrow. I just love those of you that go the extra mile. I just know that it's not convenient. It's not the thing that you feel like doing. But either quote tweet at Ross Tucker NFL or at Ross Tucker Pod, or you take advantage of one of our sponsors like Raycon Earbuds or AutoZone or whatever, or you go to YouTube, you hit the thumbs up, and you make a comment. All of those produce winners. And all it's really to me, it's more about the thought, right? That you guys recognize what we're trying to do here and you're trying to help us out. Plus, you get to win. I mean, there aren't that many people that actually do it. So you get to win along the way, which is pretty cool. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Speaking of pretty cool, we get to talk with the executive producer and on-air talent of the NFL matchup show every week, bright and early on a Thursday morning. Highly encourage you to check him out on social media at Greg Cosell so you can consume even more of his awesome content no matter where he is. I take notes like a madman. People email me or tweet, why are you looking down? Why aren't you? Because, look, we it's a two-man operation here, okay? If Greg <laughs> says something interesting, I need to write it down so that I can have intern Casey cut the clips so we can post on social media. So a lot more people listen than watch, so... Bear with me if I'm looking down for a second, trying to write down the great wisdom of one Greg Cosell. And I guess I want to start with this, Greg. Uh, The MVP, a lot of talk about that this week. Not asking you about Hub Arkish or any of that stuff. Uh, Just do you have an opinion on a player or a philosophy? Or I'm, I'm giving you a blank canvas here to discuss the NFL MVP award for the 2021 season. Yeah, you know, normally I don't do this kind of stuff, Ross, but I'll say this. Um, you know, I, I've been with NFL Films 42 years. I've seen a lot of football, and I'm not sure that I've ever seen a better thrower of the football than Aaron Rodgers in all my years. And, I, you know, I think Aaron Rodgers is so, so good that it's almost silly how good he is. Uh, so if I, it, I don't get an MVP vote, but if I did, I think my MVP vote would go to Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, these kinds of things are always debatable. Uh, Tom Brady certainly is is as viable a candidate as anyone. But I'm just speaking about watching Aaron Rodgers play that, to me, it's it's truly remarkable. Which, again, is not to say that that others are not. Uh, and, and because all this does is lead to people basically ripping you on social media. But... I, I just think that Aaron Rodgers is so incredibly special throwing a football. I don't think I've ever seen anybody throw like he does. Yeah, you know what I think is interesting is it seems like he's going to win it, and that's what everybody's saying. I didn't even realize this till I was looking at it, Greg. Tom Brady leads the NFL in touchdown passes by a decent amount. He leads the NFL in completions by like 50, yep. yards by several hundred, He's played in every game. Rodgers didn't. Um, you know, I guess they have one less win. And, I, and, I, I guess I just think it's interesting yeah, that and, and, I don't know what happened. I feel like towards the end of the season, if one candidate has a bad game or two and the other doesn't, it's like that's all that needs for, like, the narrative sure. train. He got shut out by the Saints, and, and it was like they turned the lights off on Brady's MVP right. candidacy when he got shut out by the Saints. Yeah. So, I mean, again, it, it's just a fun question and, and people, you know, agree, disagree. Uh, of course, unfortunately, we live in a world of vitriol. So people take this stuff personally. But uh, and, and like I said, I don't have an MVP vote and I don't care to. But uh, I just find when I watch Aaron Rodgers doing this for a long, long time, having seen a lot of coaching tape, having seen a lot of football, 
that guy, the way he throws is ridiculous. But I will say this about Tom Brady. Tom Brady is the player, is the quarterback that the people who believe that you have to run around in the NFL to play quarterback now don't have an answer for because Tom Brady doesn't run around. He throws from the pocket literally on every single play. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that that feels like the uh, the outlier now almost. You know, the guy that has zero second reaction plays. Zero second reaction ability, and, and it's always been that way throughout his career. And yet in the next breath, they'll tell you he's the greatest quarterback of all time, which is a very valid statement to make. And But they don't have an answer for why he's so great. Other than he's played a long time now and he's great, so they just leave it at that. But there's no, they don't have an answer for why if they're going to say, Ross, that you have to be able to run around now to play quarterback in the NFL. So um, some other things I want to get into with you. The Cowboys offense. Yeah. You know, I thought against Washington, Greg, they were kind of back, right? And then I'm watching them against Arizona. Something is off. Dak, certainly his connection with Amari Cooper – what are you seeing? Yeah, uh, obviously they tried to get their pass game back on track against Washington the week prior when they had Dak throw 35 passes in the first half and actually drop back 40 times. So uh, this week, it's it. you're correct. And I think one factor that is, is big is they've had l- literally no run game. They Remember how they started this season through the first five, six weeks? Their run game was dominant. They were averaging six, seven yards on first down. Zeke looked strong. Pollard was a really nice compliment. The run game was the starting foundation of their offense. They've truly been unable to run the ball meaningfully over the last, I don't know, six, seven, eight weeks. And that's been a big factor. I think Zeke has looked uh, a little slow. He doesn't have that second level reacceleration ability that he's had in the past. Um, you know, Pollard is, is much more of a, of a compliment than a, than a foundation at this point, unless they want to change that. Uh, and, you know, I think Dak, you know, I, I think he's a good player. I think right now there are times he's not seeing things as clearly as, as he has in the past. I think he's missed a few throws with poor ball placement that we expect him to make. Um, so he's not playing at a particularly high level consistently he shows flashes and I still believe he's a very good quarterback um but their offense is is something you hit it right on the head something is off there's no consistency right now the run game is clearly non-existent and the pass game is just not good enough to to compensate and camouflage the overall weakness of the run game so Greg the Tennessee Titans yeah. Are going to have the number one seed in the AFC. We assume. We think. Yes. There were a number of weeks where they were painful to watch. I mean, painful. How, how are they here? What, what, what have they done? Yeah. Well, the question is, uh, even with Derrick Henry returning for the playoffs, uh, is this the profile of a team that can get to and win a Super Bowl? And by profile, I mean a team that runs the ball, plays really good defense, and has a limited passing game. Most people would probably say that's not the profile in today's NFL. But one thing I learned early on in my career, uh, when I got a chance to to get to know coaches and and talk to a lot of different coaches, is you can win a lot of ways in this league. There's no one way. Uh, but I, I would bet that most people would say if they don't get more out of their pass game as they head into the playoffs and play better teams, that it would be difficult for this specific profile to lead to the result that they want. Uh, the only time they really got something out of their pass game, and it was extremely important, was in the second half against the 49ers a few weeks ago when Tannehill was phenomenal on third down. Everybody remembers that as the A.J. Brown game, but Tannehill was phenomenal on third down in that game. And for the most part this year, he's not been good on third down. So my sense is they will need more from their pass game. And whether they get it on third down, whether they get it being proactive, let's say throwing on first downs, uh, that's up to them. 
but it, it, you would you would be hard pressed to think that without some kind of pass game that they could go deep into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just my offensive line mentality or just kind of being a little more old school. I'm looking forward to seeing them try to just grind out some wins. Their D line is awesome. Really good. Uh, yeah, they can. I mean, now you get Foreman and Henry. Foreman's done a heck of a job. Yeah. I mean, it, they, they, they don't need to give Henry a ton of. Ca- I mean, they can, they they can keep them fresh. Yeah. Uh, uh, defensively, they have a distinct profile. They're essentially a four man D line rush defense, Ross. It's not a team that blitzes a lot. Um, sometimes when they blitz, it's more four man, what we call zone exchange pressures, where it's still four man pressures, but the fourth could be the slot corner, could be a linebacker, but then they drop a D lineman out and play zone behind it. Um, so they have a distinct profile on both sides of the ball. It's a team with a clear identity. The question is, can that take you deep into the playoffs? That's an open question. So let's move on to the Browns and the Bengals. And I really want to ask you about the two quarterbacks that aren't playing. Burrow's not playing. They're in the playoffs. They won the division. Baker Mayfield not playing. He's going to have shoulder surgery. Uh, You know, it feels like those are two guys going in different directions. What have you seen from each of them this year? Well, I think ultimately, and Baker has certainly taken a lot of abuse this year. And I think to me, when I look at a quarterback and evaluate a quarterback, I start with his traits and his attributes and his characteristics. And he needs to play to those in order to be effective. And I remember watching Baker Mayfield in his final year at Oklahoma and seeing a precision pocket player who was consistently accurate through with really good ball location. That's what he was coming out of Oklahoma. One can debate whether he should have been in the first pick in the draft or not. That's irrelevant at this point. So he went to a team and now with an offense led by Kevin Stefanski where those traits are really played to. That's ultimately what they're asking him to be, Ross. They're asking him to run an offense that features a run game, play action, play action boot. But the the reads and the throws are defined within the structure of the offense. So he needs to execute that and throw with precision timing and precise ball placement. That's what he is. He has not done that. So now the question is, can I should say he has not done that consistently. So the question is, can he get back to that? Or is Baker Mayfield, the Baker Mayfield we've seen this year where he's not played to what his ultimate traits are, is this what he's going to be going forward? Or can he get back to that? But that's what he is as a quarterback. Burrow is a different he's he's the same and different. Burrow is is really aggressive throwing one-on-ones outside the numbers, Ross, really aggressive. He's a cocky, confident quarterback, and he gives his receivers a chance. I mean, how many times have we seen this year he throws outside the numbers on vertical routes to Chase and to Higgins, and he he basically demands that his receivers make plays for him and they do. And I'm sure they feel real good about the fact that he's willing to throw those balls. And one thing that he does way better than Mayfield is he navigates and manages the pocket way better than Baker Mayfield. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, He's definitely got that swagger to him for sure. And his receivers have made him right a lot. I mean, a lot. Um, it's it's pretty remarkable. All right, a couple more games I want to get to with you. The Niners and the Rams. I think arguably the game of the day. Rams need to win to win the, the division. Niners need to win to clinch a playoff berth. Uh, I think it'll be Trey Lance against Matthew Stafford. What are you seeing from those guys? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously the Niners are playing at Coy, and we have no idea because – as we speak today on a Thursday, Jimmy Garoppolo did practice some on Wednesday and Kyle Shanahan, unless he's just playing the coy game has indicated that if Jimmy Garoppolo is healthy enough to play, he's his guy. Now, obviously I watched Trey Lance last week and I thought after a slower start, he settled in. Um, He ran. It was clear that Kyle Shanahan had far more confidence in Trey Lance 
to run the pass game portion of the Niners offense than was the case when Lance started, you know, two, two and a half months ago when it seemed like the whole game was design runs by Trey Lance. There were very few design runs by Trey Lance. There was some boot action more so than with Garoppolo, but I thought that Lance did settle in. They ran plays that I've seen over and over again in the 49ers offense, staple plays. The touchdown he threw to Samuel was a staple play that they've run many times before. Many seem to think that that was a Trey Lance play. It wasn't a Trey Lance play. The Niners have run that play numerous times, and Garoppolo has made that same throw. Uh, they ran the in-breaking routes that are a true staple of the 49er offense, but I thought Lance settled in. But the bottom line point with the Niners, they're a running football team. When these two teams played Week 10, the Niners manhandled them on both sides of the ball, Ross. Elijah Mitchell had 27 carries in that game, and that's where the Niners start. And their defensive line, it's been overlooked a bit because of the garoppolo Lance debate, but their D-line over the last month or so has played extremely well uh, Arden Keyes played extremely well. Samson Ebukam has played very well. We know about Bosa and Armstead, but this has been a group that's played really well. Obviously, they have some issues at corner, and that's where you'd like to think, if you're the Rams, that you can exploit that defense, but you will have to protect. What's going on with Matthew Stafford and some of these turnovers? Yeah, that's a great question. I, you know, the, the first one he threw this week, the interception return for a touchdown to Chuck Clark. I almost feel like I need to ask Matthew Stafford what he saw because, look, I've never taken a snap from center, so I, I don't want to sit here and act like, you know, oh, it's bad. But I, I don't know what he saw in that play because he basically threw it right to Chuck Clark on a route concept that's a staple of, of, uh, of what the Rams do. So he seems to have two or three of those a game, not interceptions necessarily, but where he throws and you just – it seems like uh, what's what did he see? And then I can't answer that question. But then he'll make great throws. Um, and they're a difficult offense to defend because of what they do formationally, because of their use of motion. So they're still a very difficult offense to defend. Keep in mind, everybody wants to focus on, on Stafford and the interceptions – but he's also put up big numbers. This is a big number offense. The pass game, for the most part, has been very effective this season. Last game I want to ask you about, Greg, is the one that I will be attending. Really looking forward to it. I'll be calling the game for Westwood one Sunday night. It's the Chargers. Oh, yeah. It's the Raiders. You know, I think it's interesting, Greg. This will be my third Raiders game since Thanksgiving. So I've followed them. I've studied them. I feel like nobody realizes how good of a year Derek Carr has had. It's like people just don't even talk about Derek Carr. Yeah, and I think he, because their team's been so up and down this year, he's the one who bears the burden of that. Um, but I think one thing that has stood out, and you know this from having studied them as you're preparing for the game for this week, is they've gotten the run game back in on track over the last number of weeks. And I think that's important. Josh D Jacobs, I think, has looked very good over the last number of weeks. Uh, I think that because to me, and I don't know your feeling, you certainly know a lot more about O-line play. I think their O-line struggles at times in pass protection. And I think that to ask Derek Carr to drop back 35, 40, 45 times a game by choice is a tough way to go. And one thing about Carr, I think he's a very good quarterback, but I think Carr always has a tendency to be a little risk averse and a little cautious. And I think the more you ask him to drop back, the more likely he, he is that he dumps it down. Uh, so I think the run game for them is absolutely critical. On the other side, we know what we're going to get from the Raiders defense. They're going to rush four and play cover three. And you, you, you'll you see the cover three beaters that the Chargers will will whip out. That's the way you attack it. Um, and I think that that's, that's a key part of this game because even though Eckler's had a really good season, a running back, he's not a true foundation back in terms of number of carries. It's much more of a passing offense than it is a running offense. Check out this man on social media so you always know what he's up to, at Greg Cosell. You don't want to miss any of his outstanding content. Man, love the conversation. I have like seven or eight. I usually whittle it down to four or five. I don't want to kill Casey. 
um, in terms of cutting up the clips. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Ross. And thank you, Raycon Earbuds. Got that early morning flight tomorrow to Dallas. I'll be working out a couple times. So nice that I am going to have Raycon wireless earbuds. The best way to bring audio with you, because no matter how much you shake things up, look, a lot of people have New Year's resolution. You want to exercise more, whatever it is. I'm telling you, music helps. They even have awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings. I mean, it's pretty cool. Everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. Eight hours of playtime, a 32-hour battery life, and they're priced just right. Here's the thing that I love. They're half the price of the other premium audio brands. It's no wonder Raycon's Everyday Earbuds have over 48,000 five-star reviews. Right now, our listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com. Dot com slash Tucker. That is buyraycon.com slash Tucker to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash Tucker. Tucks takes. Good morning, Ross. Well, let's start with the back and forth between Aaron Rodgers and one of the 50 voters for NFL MVP. That's the Associated Press's Hub Arkish. Right. I actually know Hub. I've worked with Hub several times. Thanksgiving Day games in Detroit. He'll be on the sideline, and I've been in the booth. He does some work for Westwood One. I, I guess the best way I would describe this is to say that Hub Arkish said the quiet part out loud. There are There is no question for any of these awards, Hall of Fame, All-Pro, MVP, that some of the voters have – inherent biases guys they like guys they don't like that's life i'm not saying it's right i'm not sure i'm even saying it's wrong it's certainly not ideal but i think it's reality and you know he said it publicly but there are other people that feel that way privately and then by the way there's people that have those biases and they don't even know it right it's not like something that they would say outwardly but when they're filling out their ballot, they kind of are biased towards or against certain guys. Just the way it is. Tough stakes. Speaking of back and forth, Antonio Brown issued a statement concerning the end of his time with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A very long statement in which he claims he's got a really bad ankle injury to the point where he needs to have surgery, have it operated on, and that the issue on the sideline on Sunday was Arians told him to get out on the field. He said he couldn't because of his ankle. Arians told him he's cut, and that's why he left. That is Antonio Brown's story. I'm There's a lot of people there. There's a lot of people around him. So we'll see if anybody corroborates that story. Now, they obviously work for the Bucks, so they have – an inherent bias. Um, I guess my my one comment or a couple comments would be, number one, man, if your ankle is bothering you, certainly was an interesting way to leave the field, you know, jumping up and down and doing those things. Couldn't have been bothering them that much, right? I mean, we've all seen guys with an ankle injury and they're limping and they can't do anything on it. This guy is like jumping up and down uh, in the side, uh, on in the end zone, looking pretty good to me. Doesn't mean he didn't have an ankle injury, just not the way I would go out if my ankle was bothering me that much. And then uh, the reality is, for him, we'll see what happens, but he has lost the benefit of the doubt. I mean, he's done so many things over the last couple of years that even if he's telling the truth here, which he might be doing, this is why it's really, this is why your reputation matters. This is why your decisions have consequences. Because on some level, it feels like he's a little boy that cried wolf. Tux takes. Tennessee Titans designated running back, stud running back, Derrick Henry for return. Well, Greg and I touched on it a little bit. I highly doubt he would play this week against the Texans. I think they will try to get him geared up slowly 
for the playoffs. Hope they have a bye. They can give him two more weeks where he can run around and practice, get that thing 110% for the playoffs, and really give the Titans a boost. You know, though it was interesting what Greg said about the Titans. They haven't been overly impressive. You know what? There are teams that have won the Super Bowl that haven't been overly impressive, didn't have a great, you know, passing game, but they won a couple playoff games ugly. Next thing you know, they're in the Super Bowl and they win it. I think of like the 90 Giants, the 2000 Ravens. I mean, you can win a lot of different ways. And the Titans are going to have a real shot, I think. Tux takes. Washington football team locked up uh, Charles Leno as their left tackle for the next three years. So funny, too, because when the Bears released him, I thought that was a really bad idea. And the Bears never were able to replace him this year. You know, they drafted the kid that couldn't play. Then they signed Jason Peters. Bears would have been much, much better off if they had just kept Charles Leno. And that's what I told you would happen. And that's exactly what happened. Tux takes the wonderlick for draft prospects. Uh, Ross, is that going away? It sounds like it is. Yeah, um, it do- doesn't sound like it's gonna be a part of the combine anymore. I've never really totally understood the uproar about the wonderlick. It's not a perfect test, but like none of them are at the combine. Like the vertical jump. Or the broad jump? How much does that have to do with playing offensive line? Not a lot. All any of these things are, are just baseline measurements that the teams have to be able to compare to prior years. And then there's so much sensitivity about the Wonderlick scores. Well, what about the guys that have really good Wonderlick scores, like I would have, and really bad vertical jumps, like I would have? I, I just feel like everybody is so sensitive. Like, it's there's plenty of guys with terrible Wonderlick scores that were awesome NFL players. So it's there's not there's no reason to get all bent out of shape if somebody has a low Wonderlick score. It's just one thing that they take a look at. None of them forty yard dash. None of those are like perfect tests for who will or will not succeed in pro football. They're all just measurements, basic measurements of something. Tux takes. And finally, the COVID list additions from yesterday, which are significant because anybody that goes on it from here on out can't play this weekend. And that includes Bengals, Joe Mixon, in addition to Trey Hendrickson, Trey Hopkins, Quentin Spain, and Von Bell from Tuesday. Cowboys, Micah Parsons, Steelers, cornerback Joe Hayden as well. Well, so the Bengals, interesting. Mixon, remember, Mixon can't play now. And Joe Burrow's not playing. So I would imagine the Bengals are resting a lot of guys. So guys like Hendrickson, Hopkins, Spain, I doubt they ever come off the COVID list. Or I mean, for this game, for this week, even though they could. Kind of like the Eagles, it gives the Bengals the opportunity to promote more guys from the practice squad so that they can rest more of their starters in this game. So I don't think we'll see any of those guys come off the list. As for Joe Hayden, you know, this might be his last year in Pittsburgh. This might be his last game, and now he can't play. That stinks. Because I know those guys want a winning record. I know they want to go out on top, Hayden and Roethlisberger. Not on top, but go out with a win. And uh, I'm really bummed for Micah Parsons. Probably wasn't going to win Defensive Player of the Year anyway. Uh, My guess is that'll be T.J. Watt with the way he's finished with a flourish. And rightfully so. But Micah Parsons is from right here where I am in Harrisburg. You know, an hour and 35 minutes, an hour and 40 maybe from the stadium. I was probably going to have a lot of friends and family there at Lincoln Financial Field Saturday night. And now he can't even play in the game. won't even be there. That's a bummer. Because you know, I don't know if he grew up an Eagles fan or not, but you know he wanted to play in that game. So I am bummed out for him. I am bummed out. Any time I have to stand in a line anywhere, which is why when it comes to auto parts, I just don't do it. I go to AutoZone.com because you can get free same-day store pickup. No waiting in line. I 
Look, time is our most precious deal. I talk about this all the time. I now look at time like money. So when somebody wants 15, 20 minutes or whatever, I look at what I think that's worth to me in money. And I say, no, just like I wouldn't give them, you know, 200 bucks. I'm not giving them 20 minutes. Time matters. You know, look, I, you know, I, I, I am plenty giving of my time in certain times. If I'm driving, I'll help young kids or whatever that want to get into broadcasting or sports or whatever. But the point is, is our time is precious. That's why I love AutoZone. Love companies like them with the free next day delivery, free same day store pickup. I mean, that is what I'm talking about. Convenience. So next time you're starting a job, start it by shopping your way at AutoZone.com with their free same day pickup, free next day delivery. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And you know where else you should get? To all of our Patreon.com slash RT Media. I think we're done here. Shout out companies. Pizza Boy Brewing. If you're ever, if you ever see that beer anywhere, get it. If you're on the West Shore of Harrisburg or near Harrisburg, go there. Sporticulture, unique, cool gifts. It's agriculture with sports. I love it. Going to work out a, a giveaway with those guys. Vision Comics with an X. If you're into comics, that's the place. HumanHeadNYC.com, a very cool Human Head vinyl record. And then SteakhouseSports.com, Chris Aronchek has a very cool way of you making games more interesting that you should check out for the Week 18 in the playoffs for sure. Other than that, we will have a Picks Friday bright and early for all of you tomorrow morning. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.